talk. It's really it's disturbing with the light, but I get used to it. Um, can you help me keep the time? Okay, because I want to talk like 20 minutes and then I do an experiment for 10 minutes okay, in the end. Fifteen minutes from now I'll do this. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, you introduced me, I'm a set designer and I work with spaces as experiences. And right now I feel more like uh, I want to show you a video as an introduction and I was just told it might not work, but let's see. Here, this is my t the title of my uh, talk. And this is what I want to show you something about. Let's see if it works. No. I really worked on the flow of this talk so it would open up with this video that could make you feel, get in a certain condition, emotionally condition. So the mountains are also nice, but <laughs> <laughs> I can get used to the space instead. I really hope I can. Yeah, here it is. Okay, let's say we start from here. Can you turn? <laughs> Now we're back. Uh, I wanted to show you this video to explain how I feel when I enter kind of lost spaces or spaces that are not taken care of. And this is an example. It's a place I work at the moment. It's Roskilde University in Denmark. And this is uh, for students to work in groups. So they work in these kind of environments. And at many like learning institutions and public institutions, uh, workspaces, work environments, we meet spaces like this. Spaces that are not taken care of, and it really offended, offends me. Um, I keep asking myself, why is it like that? Why don't they do anything with these spaces? Can't they see that something might be not inspiring or motivating for, for learning, for example? So how can we define, or is that, what is the challenge these spaces have. I think we are, now I just want to list up different challenges. So we are really stuck with habits. We used to have the spaces like that. So we don't really recognize that it might be a bit boring. We have traditions that meeting spaces should look like that and that. We have the long table and the bus in the end of the table. And of course, it should be a neutral environment because else we would get disturbed or we can't focus. Another thing is that the uh, functions directs the space. So here is the main focus that functions are in, but the atmosphere is not really, um, yeah, <laughs> nothing really, nobody really did, did anything to the atmosphere. Then it can be a matter of economy, so often we don't have those big uh, budgets to do spaces. Or what I, what I often meet is that, that it's always the last point on the list or the budget list. So we, we do uh, 
for example, with a conference, we do the program and we do the food and we do all those things you need you, know, you use to experience, but the space is always the last thing. And it's also very often, uh, it can be expensive, but it can also be done very cheap. But I think we really, um, it can really be a problem that we don't prioritize to use money on this. So we get these kind of discounts solutions. Then it can be a matter of style. What kind of style do we like? And we can talk about aesthetics. Is it beautiful to us to be in these spaces? But I think aesthetics, aesthetics is not just about something being beautiful. It's also about, or it is, to me it is about something that attracts attention or appeals to us. So aesthetics don't have to do with something just being beautiful, in my opinion. I'll just fast forward these. Media can compete with the, the, uh, the, with the space very often. A media can take over and it can suggest a nice experience as well, but in combination with space it would be something else. Then we have lack of, lack of knowledge. We don't really know how to deal with the spaces. And actually, I really like this space, even that it's presented like this is a boring space, but at, at least we have some characters standing on the tables. So I like the signals that this space will send. So then we can be blind. I mean, maybe we don't see what is really going on. Or here, of course, it's also a matter of style. Do we like these kind of, of atmospheres? Or lack of curiosity. We, we don't really know what to do. We don't really see it. We don't see the potentials. Um, and we can't imagine what to do in there. What, how can we change the space? And one sing, single example to me is these shelves. At Rook, those shelves are all over and they are completely empty. And to me, it's really disturbing because it feels like somebody moved out very fast. Or it's really a tragedy. So, there is hope, I should say. Or I, <laughs> and I come as the saver of all this, or what you say. But, but I think there's hope and uh, there are some potentials working with spaces. I've listed up some here. So space can motivate and can inspire and can stimulate our subjecti subjectivity sides. But it can also invite us to be um, more innovative and it can open up for various intelligences. So we don't, wh what you also know, and of course, we don't just think with our in intellectual brain, we also think with our bodily brain, and we have all different kinds of intellectuals persistent here. But when we work in typical learning environments, those intellectual ones are stimulated the most. But space can open up to be more bodily uh, engaged in the learning process. Um, to me, I'm a set designer, so to me, Space is a tool, and space is storytelling. And I use space to create experiences and interaction. So, actually, this is my tool, and those boxes, but also the lights and the sounds and what is around. And being a scenographer is something a bit different from being an interior designer or an architect. They work a lot with, I should say, functions. It's the functions of the spaces and um, yeah, where, where the chairs and the tables should be positioned. And here, and now I just want to present my approach because I work from the storytelling side, I work with atmospheres, but I work with, or, I, or like to frame it, I work with spaces as an experience. So when I, I'm suggested a space that I should design, I look at it as an experience. And um, then I start from another point of view, 
because then I don't start with positioning the table. I start, of course, with looking at what is going on here, what kind of actions do I want, what kind of storytelling is that I want here. And I try to identify a kind of core storytelling, core story of the space. And I work very differently. So what you see here is not typical stage design, because actually I'm, I must admit that I just did one uh, theater scenography. And uh, I'm a bit proud of it, I shouldn't be, but, but uh, I'm, I'm so curious about what space can do and how I can use it to tell stories with. So I'm really into doing site-specific staging or stage uh, set design. So I go to all different kinds of environments and think, what can this space be used for? How can I tell a story here? Um, what kind of stories is going on that I can em emphasize by making a space that frames it, that makes audi an audience or users see this story that is going on? So I kind of add something to the space. Um, Yeah. And uh, what I should, s oh, uh, what I just wanted, I have some points, and it's so hard to remember those. <laughs> this is really what I want to say. So I have it written here. I have two of them. And by the, the first, uh, the, the slide before, being a scenographer working with space. I would say, like this is my point, I'm engaged in the work of transforming spaces and environments to make it a sensory as well as an intellectual experience where both body and mind is situated. So it's so much easier to write it down instead of remembering when you stand here. I'm sorry. <laughs> but why space? Why should we concern about space? What is it that it can do? Um, where can we find those arguments? And how it's hard to explain what is space. So I'm, I want to show you this, or there's this saying, a picture is worth a thousand words. We know that one, and maybe we use it sometimes. Uh, so the power of the images are very strong. They're very good at communicating. This is what the saying tells us. But what about the space? Can it do some kind of the same? What if you uh, translate or make a picture, an image, into a space? And actually, there, there, there is, of course, paintings has been uh, a means to communicate during like, a very long period of time. And before people could read, they used pictures and images to explain important um, important stories and messages. For example, who is God and how do we relate to God? The churches used, used it a lot on their walls. So the power of, of images we know, and we also know it in these media times where p images are to us all the time. But if I go back to art history and just scratch what happened when we moved into space, it was around the 1900th century that the, the new avant-garde movement start to work their art expressions into space. And why did they do this? They did it be maybe because they were curious, but they also wanted to explore another way of telling stories, art stories. And then the installation art started around the, this 1900th century. And in the 60s, it's really exploded. So we are very used to it right now. Those installations that we can walk into and get surrounded by the message of the artwork. And I think this is a nice example because an installation compared to, um, to a painting also offers time, of course, and space. So we can create our own story in this flow that we are doing. Uh, through the artwork. And it, of course, it's not this, the typical story that we can define where's the start, the middle, and an end, but it's a more like an open, 
I could say universe, story verse, or what we will call it, that you walk into and then you compose your own story or you compose your own sense of meaning in this artwork. And this is what I mean, this is what I mean uh, that, that space can do. It can make us compose our own meaning in, uh, the, the, this, during this tour. Five minutes. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. <laughs> Body and minds. We like, like this picture because I really hate it. Um, <laughs> But, but it, space can connect body and mind. Um, so it, again, it opens up for these different intellectuals that we have inside. And if you add also, if you add story to this, um, you can stimulate people both intellectually, physically, but also emotionally. I think this, the story is really the, the trigger or the hook to engage us emotionally, like we know. Um, to sum this up, because I'm really in love with this scenography thing, and it's so hard to describe what, what is scenography about, but uh, I think scenography really defines my opinion or my perspective at how to work with spaces. And here we have two scenographers saying this thing about scenography, but you can also ju just put space instead. And this is what I mean. It's all about. Um, I'll just move fast forward. So space. I mean, this can be a bit like uh, <laughs> it's my. Uh, how do you say that? I, I I just have this idea that space is also a media. So I work with it as a media. And a media to me is, for example, an app. And apps can be used for to be a tool, or it can be entertaining, or it can tell a story. And in the same way, I think space can do these different things. But the app is very temporary, where the space is more permanent, and you can spend longer time in space. So actually, if you do your workspaces, comparing them to an app or what kind of experience you want to stay in and keep yourself inspired by. Um, I think space has really a quality there. Space can be a host um, for social events, but also it can also direct how we, how we want to be social with each other. And you can... Uh, I, I call space like a, as a host, but you can also uh, at a real host or maybe a video host, some text could also be host, like the voice of a host is really effective here. Or you could add, uh, I put it myself in, a real host that could host the space, but also could direct people the way through the space. So it's this combination of space and a person or a voice. Um, and very soon I come to some examples, um, but I like to end up with this. Um, <laughs> another point that I think space contains a huge potential. By organizing and designing spaces, we can unlock new new ways of thinking and acting. I believe that our surroundings have a great impact on us. And by rethinking spaces and everyday spaces, we can increase our motivation and inspiration, even creativity and well-being. Um, very quickly, I want to show you some examples because it's all words and up in the air. So now I show you how I work with spaces, what different kind of approaches I do. So it's concrete examples on what is it I'm talking about. So, for example, I do like celebrations. Here's the 60 years anniversary at the Film Academy in uh, Copenhagen. And uh, we die, or I use this metaphor of an old movie by Fellini to create an environment that could tell the story of the history of film. And also we use these strips to show different statements um, from students. 
Another thing is that I went into the local, uh, my local environment area, uh, neighborhood, you say, and um, I loaded a space with a story. So I went to this square, and uh, the, um, the municipality, they wanted kids to be engaged in their local society. Uh, and how are we a local um, community? So we created this story, this story of something, a, a, a creature coming from outer space and ending up here and not being comfortable, not being used to, to know how uh, human beings act. And then people or, or kids could come and help those small creatures to get their way back to their own world. But they would have to look at what is the qualities of this area. I also work with installations. So this is more to, to stage an idea or a message that here is the power of words. I want to explain people what is the power of words. So they meet this installation where they could work on, or they could interact with words in, a, in a different ways. And here we had presented some rituals or effects, objects that could facilitate a ritual that had to do with words. I also use space as an instrument, and actually this is a, a very like a, a concrete instrument. I collected 50 radios, and then I positioned them uh, in different spaces. So actually I traveled for two years around with these radios, and just made environments by positioning them in exhibitions or club environments. And then music really could be played on it. So you get this scratchy uh, sound, very individual sound by the different radios. But the space can also be a tool, like a work tool, or here I worked with the municipality again, and they wanted to explore uh, what the local citizens thought about culture. They were about to build a new culture center, and how can the citizens express what is culture to them? And then we built this universe environment that where we invited citizens to pick different images that could define or describe what kind of culture they wanted. So they did a collage or like a, a, a image uh, a collage of, uh, of their, um, yeah, the, the culture they wanted. I work with uh, work environments. How can you rearrange work situation? Here's the meeting again, the meeting table. So we work very much with, a, with a, an organic shape that would redirect the hierarchy of this company. Because where should the boss sit now? So they would be more collective. Hmm? And then uh, it's more like event-based. It's for Malmö Symphonic Orchestra. They have this joystick concert, and they wanted to do kind of an opening event uh, before the concert. And then we invited the, the community, the gamers community, to come and decorate with us. Um, but here the scenography is more or less this uh, post-it shop kiosk, where you could get post-its, and then you could do like your own uh, pixel art on the windows. And in the end, now I work with the, with the students at Roskilde University with redesigning their workspaces. And I also like this way of working because then the users take ownership of uh, their own spaces. So maybe I don't like the outcome or from a design perspective, I think, oh, maybe it's not really the best thing, but they really have this ownership. And these kind of processes are very efficient. Um, you can do something yourself, or you could start to at least ask yourself some questions when you are in a typical work environment. Could it be different? How could I maybe change it? And now I, <laughs> because time is so short, I, I just want to do this experiment. And it's um, because last year I got this challenge can you do something? Can you do an exercise with us that would work with the space? Um, and of course, I could do that, and I could come up with something. But I don't have the, that many things to work with. I have this screen, and I also have you as an audience. 
people sitting around. So to me, this defines a space. So now I just, with you, if you want to help me and do it, uh, we will do a space composition. Um, and I have some equipment here, which is uh, these. You know them from all the techno parties you used to go to. Can I get some help? Because we have four different colors. And I just want to distribute those colors to you. And it will be your space element in, in uh, here. So I think the first two rows should get yellow. The next two rows would get red. Can you see what colors are here? And then we have uh, green and blue. So the third is yellow, red, blue, and green in the back. And you just get one each. And what you do is uh, yeah, you, you, it's uh, this knecklys. You break it. Where do the white ones go? They are blue. So they go in, on, on the, thir the third level. And this is green, it goes to the back. And remember, this is an experiment. I do some photos and then I go back and see what is really going on here. But it's an experiment. Um, this is blue, yeah. Just, you can break them, and be, because it's an experiment, I need somebody to photo for me. I think it works now. Well, here's a blue one. It, it's not really the right one. It goes to the back. When you work with space, it's also to work with volume. And this is what we have here. We have volume because you are many like col voices moving those sticks. Okay, but can, we, can you turn down the light a bit? So now we do a space composition um, in between your sticks and the screen. And on the screen you will see directions. So now, I fir I firstly, I show you some examples how to move those sticks, because it's about moving the sticks. So now I want to see yellow sticks moving like in circles, and the other sticks are, are silent. So these are circles, yes. Can we see it with the red sticks as well? Whoa, <laughs> it looks so fantastic from here. <laughs> it's really my own trip. Okay, now we have... <laughs> Blue ones, okay. Can you turn up the light a bit down because it would be so beautiful. And then the green ones coming in. What are you doing? You're doing like this. Okay. That's a test. Are you ready to do the composition I have made? It has a title. And the title is Nordic morning explosion. So this is what we will do. Here's no sound. Maybe some sound will appear, but, but uh, it's a space composition. So we start with this. And then... Water. The sun comes up, and you see the water, and the trees are just waving. 
and the sun comes up more up, and the sun takes over, and now you get explosion. and silence. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry I couldn't show it to you. Actually, I wanted a camera to project up here so you could see it because it really looked fantastic. And stick around.